Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Bongani Timula Sibego. Um, today we're going to discuss a very important topic in life sciences, great tough. The topic that we're going to discuss is the human endocrine system. Now, looking at our lesson plan or what we're going to discuss or our objectives. Now, we're going to look at the definition of an endocrine system or what is the endocrine system. And we're going to look at the differences between the endocrine and exocrine glands. What are hormones, location of glands, hormones they secrete and function of each hormone. Like uh, we're going to look at the hypothalamus, which secretes ADH and oxytocin, which I'm not going to dwell on on, on this video. Because it's actually a very important hormone, which needs its own video and I think it needs to be discussed um, when it comes to pregnancy because it plays a very important role there because once it is released it stimulates the, the stretching of the uterus during child labor. Now we're also going to look at the pituitary gland or the hypophysis which uh, secretes uh, what we call growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone and prolactin which also plays a very important role in women. We're going to look at also the thyroid gland, which secretes a hormone called thyroxin. We're going to look at the islets of Langerhans in the kidneys, in the pancreas, sorry, not in the kidneys, sorry, in the pancreas, and that uh, secretes what we call the insulin and glucagon. These two hormones, they are very important because they play a very important role, a role in controlling the the, the amount of, of glucose in our blood. Also, we're going to look at the adrenal glands, which are adrenaline and aldosterone. And also, we're going to look at the ovaries, or the ovary, which secretes hormones, which are estrogen and progesterone. And last but not least, we are going to look at the, the, the testes, which secretes testosterone. Uh, what is the endocrine system? In simple terms, like an endocrine system is a collection or a system of glands that produces hormones that, are, that regulate or control a metabolism, growth and development, tissue function, sexual function, reproduction, sleep, mood, and so many other things. Now, the endocrine system is made up of the pituitary gland, is made up of the thyroid glands, is made up of the parathyroid glands, which we're not going to discuss in our video. Uh, it, may, it is made up of the adrenal glands. It is made up of the pancreas. It is made up of the ovaries in females. And it is made up of the testicles, what we call the testes in, in males. Guys, the endocrine system is a very important system because without it, I think um, we're not going to be able to survive because it, it works together with our nervous system. Now, let us just look at the differences between the endocrine and the exocrine glands. So the endocrine glands, they are ductless, meaning they do not have ducts. Therefore, they secrete their hormones directly into the bloodstream. And then from the bloodstream, they are transported to their target organs. And an example of endocrine glands, we have the pituitary gland and the thyroid gland. Now, we're going to look at the, the exocrine gland. Now, the exocrine glands, what they do is that they, they have ducts, these ones. They secrete their hormones into a duct or a tube called the duct, which transports the substance to target organs. And an example of these ones, uh, we have the salivary glands and also the sweat glands. Um, what also is important is we need to understand uh, the characteristics or the properties of hormones. What are hormones? So hormones are in simple terms, they are organic chemical messengers. By organic, we mean they consist of hydrogen atoms, they consist of oxygen atoms, they consist of carbon atoms. And most of them, they are proteins and some are steroids, and they are secreted in small quantities into the bloodstream. And also they are transported to, to target organs. And 
they play a regulatory function by stimulating or inhibiting something. Now, when something is stimulated, it means it is activated to perform. And if it's inhibited, it means it is blocked or stopped from performing. And also like guys, the endocrine system, which consists of the hormones, it works together with the nervous system, as I've stated, why it is so important. It works together with the nervous system. How? Because now what happens is that your brain tells, um, you know, it detects actually what the changes in your body. And then once it detects the changes in your body, now it starts to tell your particular glands to secrete certain, certain hormones, which they're going to regulate some parts of the body in order to inhibit or stimulate something. I'll explain further on that one. Now, we're going to look at our first gland, which is what we call the hypothalamus, which is there, as you can see, it's here. It is the red. This is the part that is circled with a red circle there. Now, this hypothalamus, it secretes a hormone that is called an antidiuretic hormone. This antidiuretic hormone is abbreviated as ADH, and it is also called the vasopressin. Now, this hormone is secreted to a particular target organ. So this organ is called a kidney. Now, what it does in the kidney, it controls the concentration of water in blood. Now, this particular hormone is released into ways or is released into situations. Maybe in case your blood lacks water or maybe your body lacks water, what happens now is that this antidiuretic hormone is going to be secreted, secreted. Once it is secreted into the target organ, which is the kidney, what happens is that it stimulates what we call the absorption of water in your kidneys. Because now you need to get water in your body because now you have lost so much water, you need water. What happens now, the water is reabsorbed back into your body because we need water. Remember, 70% of our body is made up of water and water is a very important substance in our body because it plays so many functions. And also maybe in case of maybe you have too much water in your body or in your bloodstream or in your blood, what happens is that now this antidiuretic hormone is secreted in small amounts or the secretion of this hormone is decreased. Now, meaning now, there won't be any reabsorption happening. More water will be lost through your kidneys. And when you have, when the absorption occurs, like your urine looks yellowish in color. Why? Because now most of the water is reabsorbed. What is left there is the waste material, which you do not need, like your urea. Hence, it's yellowish in color. But now, if maybe you have so much water and more water is released, out of your body, now your urine becomes diluted because most of the water comes with your urine. Hence, your urea is diluted so that, hence your, your, your urine looks uh, not orange, it looks clearer. Now moving right along, we also have the pituitary gland, which is also called the hypophysis. Now the hypophysis, as you can see on our diagram or picture there, it is the very pink or the very or the pinkish um, part here it is at the base of the brain this is our brain this is where it is situation at the base of the brain uh, below the hypothalamus guys most of our hormones come from the hypothalamus and then from the hypothalamus they go to the pituitary gland where they are released now the pituitary gland releases the following hormones, the growth hormone, the thyroid stimulating hormone, the reproductive hormones, which are the follicle stimulating hormone, the luteinizing hormone, and also prolactin. Now, growth hormone is very simple because even the name itself, it tells you that it has to do with growth. It controls growth. You know, when maybe, for instance, um, a lot of, growth hormone is released in your body, what happens is that now you get somebody who's so big, it, it actually 
it is what we call gigantism. Somebody becomes very big. But now, once the person, once this hormone is not secreted in large amounts, therefore that person will not be developing properly. The growth of that person is going to be disturbed. And we're going to look at the thyroid stimulating hormone as well. This one, as you can tell, it stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete thyroxine, which is a very important hormone because it controls the basic metabolic rate or it controls metabolism in your body. Uh, as you all know, metabolism is a very important process in our body because during metabolism, what happens is that uh, oxygen and other nutrients, they are used to form ATP, which is energy that we need. Now also, the reproductive hormones, we have the follicle stimulating hormone. It also says, it explains itself as well because it says follicle stimulating hormone. So it stimulates the development of the follicle in the ovaries. Remember, we talked about this when we discussed the menstrual cycle. And also we've got the luteinizing hormone, which stimulates ovulation and stimulates the development of the corpus luteum. Guys, we looked at this. Uh, these two hormones when we are dealing with uh, the menstrual cycle. Remember the luteinizing hormone, it stimulates a, a, what, a very important process whereby now the egg from the ovaries, once it's mature enough, what happens? It is released into the fallopian tube where fertilization is gonna take place in case copulation takes place. And also it stimulates the development of the yellow body. Remember the yellow body guys, we talked about the yellow body. And then we also have prolactin, this one stimulates the mammary glands to secrete milk. Simple. Now, looking at our next uh, gland is the thyroid gland. This one, as you can see there, this is our thyroid gland, which is below our larynx, but now it is attached to, to our trachea. Now, this um, thyroid gland, it secretes thyroxine, as I stated, which plays or controls um, the metabolic uh, uh, rate. As I stated, that it controls metabolism in our bodies. And then moving right along, we have the pancreas, which consists of the islets of Langerhans. So the pancreas, they secrete very important uh, hormones which control sugar levels in our bodies, you know. Um, Glucagon and insulin, these two, they play different roles in our body. I'll make a situation about this. I will explain how they do it. Now, the glucagon, it stimulates the conversion of glycogen, which is a, a glucose in a storage form, and then to glucose to increase blood glucose levels in our bodies. And then insulin, it stimulates the conversion of glucose to glycogen, which is stored in our liver and in our muscles so that the blood glucose levels are reduced. Now, you know, how does this happen is that now, if maybe your body has a lot of sugar, what happens is that insulin is released or secreted. You know, once it is secreted, what will happen now the absorption of the glucose by the cell is increased. Therefore, what happens is that the sugar levels, they're going to decrease. Because what will also happen is that the glucose is going to be converted to glycogen, which is stored sugar in our bodies, which is stored in the liver and in our muscles in case we need it in future. Remember that it's not always the case whereby now you're all you always have a lot of sugar in your body. Sometimes you might lack sugar. That's where glucagon comes in now. Let's say maybe you lack sugar in your body or maybe the levels of sugar, they drop in your body. Now glucagon is released. Once the glucagon is released, it, what it does is that it, it takes that glycogen which is stored in your liver and then it converts it back to glucose and then it is taken to the bloodstream and then taken to different um, uh, cells in our bodies. So in order for us to increase the blood sugar levels, glucagon is what? It's stimulated. It's easy like that. 
Now, we're also going to look at the adrenal glands. You know, the adrenal glands, they are found on top of each kidney here. Here, they are found on top of your kidneys. Now, these two hormones that they secrete, they are very, very important because they also play a huge role in our bodies. Now, for instance, adrenaline increases the following. You know, in order for you to understand this, you must get a situation whereby now an adrenaline is released. In my case, um, I usually discuss this um, to people when I explain to those people who ask me about adrenaline or the adrenal glands, how it works and so forth. So adrenaline, you know, since I said, it is either secreted when you are happy or when you are, you are, you are, you are never so scared. Now, this adrenaline is what we call a fight or flight, a flight or flight hormone, flight or flight hormone, this, yes. Now, what it means is that this hormone is secreted whenever you are frightened or whenever you are excited. Now, what it does during excitation or during, um, when you are scared, when you are scared, what happens is that now your heartbeat will start to, to increase, meaning now the pumping of the blood becomes faster. Why? Because in case maybe you see a dangerous lion running towards you, you start having that heartbeat, which is going to increase. Now, once the heartbeat increases, the blood pressure increases. Because now what happens is that now your heart starts to pump faster. Why? Because the heart now starts to pump more blood, more blood, so that more blood goes into just tissues and cells, so that it distributes oxygen and nutrients so that you are able to get the energy that you will need to run away from the, from the lion. And also what happens is that it increases the conversion of glycogen to glucose. Remember now, we have that glycogen that is stored in your liver, but now it is needed because you're in danger. You need to run away, you need energy. What happens is that now that glycogen is, secret, is converted back to glucose. And then also the blood supply to the cardiac and the skeletal muscles is also increased because now, remember your heart needs food. And your skeletons, they need those nutrients. They need that oxygen. So for you to be able to run, you need oxygen and those, those nutrients which they give you energy. You know, so that respiration happens there. Also the muscle has to be supplied with this oxygen and your heart also, it needs to get this oxygen. And also, also, the skeletal muscle tone is also increased. And the rate and the depth of breathing is also increased, meaning now your breathing rate is increased. Um, how? Because, why? Sorry, why? Because now, whenever you are running away from that lion, as I stated, now what you need is oxygen, guys, and nutrients. But now in this case, breathing occurs because you need oxygen. More oxygen needs to be inhaled in your body so that you're able to have what you call solar respiration happening so that you produce more energy. And also, this adrenaline does not only increase things, but now it decreases some of the other things. For instance, it decreases the blood flow to the digestive system and the skin, because we don't need digestion when we are running. There's no time for digestion during running. We only digest when we are resting, not when we are running, and so forth. Aldosterone. So aldosterone is also a very important hormone because um, what it does, it, it acts on the kidneys as well, uh, just like the, the ADH or the antidiuretic hormone. Now, what it does, it controls the, the, the concentration of salt in your blood. You know how? In case you have too much blood in your bloodstream, now this aldosterone is secreted in large amounts but not a lot, a lot, a lot. Remember, hormones are not uh, secreted in very large quantities, but now it is secreted. Once it is secreted, what happens is that now it's going to go to your kidneys, and then in your kidneys, it does what it does. Uh, it, it, it makes the, 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 the excretion of salt to increase, which meaning more salt is going to be excreted. You know, but now in case maybe you have less salt in your bloodstream, what happens is that now this aldosterone is not secreted in large. No, sorry guys, I made a mistake. 
if you have so much salt in your body what happens this uh aldosterone it what it stimulates what the excretion of yes it, it's actually secreted in small amounts not in large amounts sorry guys during high levels of salt in your body aldosterone is secreted in very small amounts because now there won't be a, a reabsorption of of of, of salt in your kidneys but now if maybe you lack salts in your bloodstream what happens it is secreted a lot of it is secreted and then it does what it does it promotes the reabsorption of salt in your kidneys to maintain the amount of sugar that you have in your body i think i'll explain this when we do a homeostasis i'm gonna do homeostasis separately now moving right along we're gonna look at the reproductive glands or gonads. This is what is the ovary and the testes. Remember, ovaries are only found in females, but testes they are found only in males. Also, in the ovaries or in females, we get oestrogen, and this oestrogen stimulates puberty in females. You know, during puberty, what happens now is that the characteristics or the traits of the particular girl who is going through that puberty stage will start to, to you know, they, they, there's going to be a growth of their breast. Their breast starts to show and they start to show some hips. They start to grow pubic hair and so forth. And also it promotes a thickening of the endometrium. This one I explained it further when we did menstrual cycle, which we talk about um, when now we need a conducive environment for the egg to be implanted in case fertilization takes place and so forth watch that video i have it and then progesterone also it promotes the beginning of the endometrium to maintain pregnancy more of this information is found on my other video where i discuss the menstrual cycle now going to the male hormone which you call testosterone so testosterone what it does is stimulates the maturation of the sperm cells because the sperm cells when they are produced in the testes they go to the epididymis where they need to be mature so this testosterone helps in the maturation of the sperms in the epididymis because they need to be mature so that they able to fertilize the egg and also it does the very same thing as oestrogen in puberty but now in males what it does it makes men to have those characteristics when they are undergoing that puberty stage they start to have very deep voice they start to develop muscles they start to have pubic hair they start to grow beard and so many other things yes moving right along oh thank you guys for watching i'm gonna see you on the next one goodbye